I was home alone starting Thursday night this weekend. And most of the times when I'm by myself, I rarely cook just for myself. I will more than likely Uber eat some type of fast food. I know it's unhealthy. I know it's not cost efficient. But for me, it's just like a convenience thing. I don't want to cook for one person. I don't want to clean for one person. I don't want to do all that shit. I just want to watch TV, do some chill, and just have food brought to me. The luxury, right? So she left town Thursday night, and I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to get McDonald's. Now, this is also a thing I just normally do, right? She is vegetarian. She does not care that I eat meat. She does not care about me eating it around her. It's just my thing. It's just a thing that I wanted to have for myself where it's like, hey, you know what? Anytime she leaves town, I'm going to get some type of fried chicken. I'm either going to get Dave's, Chick-fil-A, Dave's, Chick-fil-A. It's more than likely going to be one of those two. There's been times where we Uber Eats our own food, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, we both don't feel like making anything. Let's just Uber Eats our own thing. And that may be inefficient, but it just makes sense, right? Like, if you are eating with a vegetarian person, you're not going to order some type of fried chicken spot. You don't want to just give them fries and a biscuit for dinner. That makes no sense. So we normally get some type of Asian variety, Mendocino Farms, something where it's like, okay, as a vegetarian person, you can have a decent meal, and so can I. So when you take that vegetarian person out of the equation, the options change a little bit. So I go for the thing that I normally don't have. I go for Chick-fil-A or Dave's. Thursday night, I was feeling a little experimental. Now, like I said, she does not care. I don't want y'all to be like, oh, he's talking shit about you on this last podcast. It's none of that. There's been times I've thrown the bag away before she even gets home. And she, she'll be like, oh, what'd you eat tonight? And I'm, oh, I, you, you know, the usual. The only thing she's ever had a problem with is McDonald's. And look, I completely get it. How can you not, right? It's probably the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. As far as how they make their food, the healthiness of it. I mean, there is no healthiness to it. But for me, McDonald's isn't something where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I think this food is good. The food is literally just happiness. As fruity as that sounds, I think it's very true. As a kid, it used to be that one meal that you'd go out and get. Now, obviously, I'm speaking from my own experience, but, you know, like when my parents would be like, oh, you know what, like, w there's no food at home tonight. Let's just go get McDonald's. Treat the kids to something. You'd go to McDonald's, order in the restaurant, play in the ball pit back then, get some type of disease that no one knew about. But back then, it was the thing to do, right? You get your little Happy Meal. You get the toy. You play. You, you're, the family's out for a little bit. Then you come home, and it's just like that. Now you keep going and the memories keep stacking on top of each other. Now you get into like middle school and high school where you kind of start, maybe not middle school, but high school, you start paying for your food a little bit more. You have a part-time job. You're driving around, you're driving yourself around. And for me, it was one more thing where it was just like, I wasn't the biggest fan of eating Indian food every night. So I would more than likely just drive down the street from the house, which was about five minutes to the nearest McDonald's, grab a couple of McChickens, eat them in the parking lot, and then drive home. That is my relationship with McDonald's. And that whole experience used to cost me maybe $3 to get yourself fed back then. It used to take $3.25. And even then, you could drop it down a little bit, right? I remember being in high school, I would order two McChickens, and a large Coke. That total would come out to three twenty-five. dollars So we fast forward to Thursday night. I go to McDonald's, and I've stepped up the order a little bit. As you know, I make a little bit more than I did in high school. So I asked for the 10-piece nugget meal and a hot and spicy on the side. Now, a quick tangent. The hot and spicy is still available in LA. I didn't know that was a luxury until recently, but the hot and spicy is still here. So for those doubters that are like, ah, you know, McDonald's ain't worth it if the hot and spicy isn't there. I agree, but it's still here. So I get a 10-piece nugget meal. He asks, medium or large? I say medium. Let's relax, right? I get the hot and spicy. And then look, I was a little nasty. I got the hot fudge sundae. Don't ask. Don't, look, I told you I was I was feeling nasty. I just felt like going all out while I was at McDonald's, having it my maybe once a month kind of thing. 
I get all of that. Now, first think about how much I probably spent there. In my head, I was guesstimating it would come out to maybe 10 bucks. So about $7 for the 10, uh, the 10 nugget meal, a buck and a half for the hot and spicy, and then maybe another buck for the Sunday. That shit came out to $18. 18 freaking dollars. Like, I understand I'm in LA and things are a little bit more expensive, but $18 for some McDonald's, bro. McDonald's used to be the spot that any income family can go and feed their kids, feed their whole family. For $18, I couldn't feed myself. My meal used to be $325. And don't get me wrong, I got less stuff back then. But $18? How could you even afford that? If you were making minimum wage in Texas, right? I know I'm comparing apples to oranges here. But if I was making $725 an hour after tax, let's say I'm making 5 bucks an hour at a part-time job. I couldn't afford meals for 20 bucks each. Out here in LA, you might as well just go to a restaurant and get a, a nice pizza or something for 20 bucks. Uh, this is McDonald's, bro. Next episode, I'm probably going to talk about the price of LA a little bit more, get into like a part three kind of thing and just talk about the crime around how expensive things have gotten around here. But 18 bucks for some McDonald's? That's next level, man. And that just made me think, like, why the hell did I come here? Why did, why did I get in the car and get into this drive through lane when I could have just Uber eat some shit and sent it straight to me? Now, like I said, I have not been cooking for myself much. So two days ago, or hmm, when does this come out? Whatever. Recently, I also went to Raising Cane's. Raising Cane's. What in the hell are y'all doing? I spent, I spent the top half of the day going to Ikea, trying to buy some picture frames. I couldn't make a decision. I got so annoyed at my indecision that I left my entire cart there and just walked out. Spent two hours in an Ikea, didn't buy anything. In addition to the 30 minutes that it took to drive down to Carson. Carson? Carlson? Carson, whatever. Two and a half hours burnt, and I thought, hey, you know what? <clears throat> let me go get some fried chicken. I already had McDonald's a couple of days ago, so let me, let me change it up. Chick-fil-A, nah, I get that a little too frequently. Let's go to Raising Cane's. Let's go to Raising Cane's, get some chicken fingers, some fries, and that good old sauce that they got. Now, firstly, I step up to the counter and I tell her, may I get the three finger combo, please? She asks all the extra questions. Do you want to donate to charity? No, thank you. I grab my receipt. I sit down. I have to clean my own table because that's the world we live in now at fast food joints. And I sit down. It takes about five minutes and I'm staring at my phone. I was like, oh, shit, you know what? Maybe I should raise my head in case they called my name. Still nothing. Food finally comes out, and this lady is whispering shit. Hot chicken for ages? Who in the hell is supposed to hear that? I go, I go up there, and I was, you know, I was pretty excited, honestly. And I go up there, and you see these little baby-ass chicken tenders. About half this size. Three of them. They give you that basket of fries, that Texas toast, which is pretty good. And then obviously cane sauce, which without that, that place is a dumpster fire. Now, I remember first having canes when I was in high school or whatever, and that shit was amazing. It was a pile of trash. Chicken tasted like I was eating Laffy Taffy. French fries were cold. How are the French fries cold? And I just, I just received them. You just put them in my hand and these bitches are already cold. So I'm adding canes to my band list. It was that bad. And then obviously the after effects, which is like, damn, you know, like I didn't even enjoy this shit. And it's still causing me pain. It's one thing where it's like, oh, McDonald's, you know what? I, I got a little happy. And then it really fucked up my system afterwards. Ah, oh, well, it's a good trade off. You know, like that's an even exchange for me. But if the food shit and then your digestive system shit, yo, what the hell? Moving on from how unhealthy I've been, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 11 of the Ajay Patel Show. My name is Ajay Patel, and thank you guys so much for joining. We finally broke the 10 episode mark, as we did last week, and then I guess, do you break it on 10 or do you break it on 11? Anyways, we're here now. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, drop a rating, all of that stuff. Anything helps the channel, anything helps the pod, so I greatly appreciate it if you do. 
Today, the agenda is pretty short. I get into a couple of headlines and then we just talk about some Halloween weekend stuff. So straight into it, I saw this article trending today and what's weird is like how when one group reports on something, everyone else pretty much copies it, even though it hasn't been vetted yet. So this whole story is around Dave Chappelle um, voicing his thoughts on the Israel-Palestine conflict during a show and people walking out. And the report is that this happened at a Boston show this past Thursday when I was eating McDonald's. And he reports that he wasn't even in Boston. So that's kind of confusing, but let's just dive into it anyways. So this is from Vanity Fair, the article I'm reading from, and it says, Dave Chappelle, the once relevant comedian. (laughs) I feel like it's biased from the start, right? The once relevant comedian whose recent years remarks on women, trans folks, and those that he refers to as the alphabet people has made him far less so. Appears to have found some new people to alienate. At a show at Boston's TD Garden, the 50-year-old reportedly criticized... Why did you have to say his age? Reportedly criticized Israel's bombing of Gaza and the U.S. support of... And the U.S. support of the effort. Firstly, he hasn't alienated that many people. Like, let's not forget that all of those quote-unquote people he's offending is still the minority. He is still probably the most popular comedian there is. There is no once relevant comedian. If you're writing about him, he's obviously still relevant. He basically condemns the Hamas attack where a bunch of Israelis died and then accuses Israel of killing innocent civilians and committing war crimes. He also said the U.S. was guilty of aiding the slaughter of innocent civilians. Now, also this. I know I've gone three weeks in a row now praising dudes, but Dave Chappelle is also on that Mount Rushmore for me. I don't even know if Drake's on there, but Will Smith's on there and Dave Chappelle is 100% on there. So if I seem biased, it's because I am. So basically throughout this, I guess he was, um, you know, making some people angry and they started walking out of his show. Here's a quote that... um, the Daily Mail received from social media. The audience was cheering Chappelle on during his tirade. I was sick. We were sick. I turned to my friends and wife and said, I think it's time to go. We walked out and met up with other Jews leaving the show. Never in my life have I felt so unsafe and so fearful of what I was witnessing. Never in my life have I felt so unsafe and so fearful of what I was witnessing. A person was talking on stage. A person was talking on stage, an individual, a single man was talking on a microphone on stage, and you felt so unsafe and so fearful of what you were witnessing. Bro, do you even know what's going on over there? I talked about it last week, and I've, I've loosened up a little bit where I'm just like, I think I have my stance now, but this is ridiculous. Like this backlash to comedians where they say something and it's like, oh my gosh, I felt so unsafe. Grow up. They're not standing up there with a gun saying, hey, who in here doesn't like my joke and shoots them. The dude is literally standing there probably with a cigarette in his hand and the microphone in the other hand. And you felt so unsafe and so fearful of what you were witnessing. Have you opened up Instagram recently? I used to at least get warnings of when graphic shit would pop up. Now you just open up people's stories and you see these kids getting beheaded. You see people getting dragged out of cars, bleeding and shit. How is that not more terrifying than seeing a comedian? Whether it's Chappelle, because I like him, or any other comedian that I don't like, or any other comedian that I don't like, how is the shit that you're seeing on Instagram not more terrifying than someone talking on a microphone? And what he's saying isn't false. What's going on right now is an absolute bully fest, bro. Look at the size of both parties that are currently in conflict. And now the the side that was already big gets the help of the U.S., who's already a massive power in its own. All for what? Like, I understand the aid and the relief and all of that, but I don't know if you've kept up with the headlines. But they didn't really need the U.S.'s help. I honestly thought the U.S. was going to go in there, diffuse shit, Joe being the pacifist that he is, that things would settle down. But then you go on to the next article where you see President Biden's request to Congress included $61 billion for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, Israel, 
14 billion to beef up border operations. So that's US Mexico stuff. 10 billion in humanitarian aid and 2 billion for Indo Pacific security assistance. The push for Ukraine aid comes after Congress was unable to include it in the 45 day continuing resolution. Whatever. Do y'all hear this spreadsheet? Look at this receipt, bro. We're talking billions. 61 billion for Ukraine. Now, I haven't kept up too much with what's happening in Ukraine because of the mass popularity and the push that's been behind the Israel Palestine conflict. But 61 billion? Also, where are we getting this money from, my guy? Isn't, what is the student loan? Oh, shit. <laughs> so I was about to be like, hey, you know, we're spending all these billions over there. What about all these, you know, the, the Americans in here that have student loans? Americans own $1.77 trillion in federal and private student loan debt. But still, bro, you add up those billions, you get closer there. Now, look, please don't mistake me for being like, oh, well, I'd rather have my student loans paid for than Ukraine receiving help. That's not the case. It's the small case, but it's not the full case, right? It's like, mm, you know, well, but I get it for the big picture of aiding who aiding people that need the aid. Cool. Do it. I support it. I'm behind it. I think it's great, especially for countries that need the support. The 14 billion for Israel brother what is going on and look you've seen how mass media has made hamas the new bin laden right hey we're just gonna bomb everything until we find hamas what the fuck are you talking about bro there are innocent people dying left and right because you just want to keep throwing these bombs hoping you hit hamas who is hamas bro all these articles that I've been reading talking about like, oh, they're trying to find this one particular leader and all of that stuff. It's wrong. I don't agree with how they're going about that. So many innocent lives are just being stripped away. This is obviously my opinion. This is also me, like I said, last episode being the tree hugger. But holy shit, man, 14 billion. We're throwing billions around. This shit is awful. I'm Look, I'm pretty educated on the topic. I've done my research extensively, but I've gotten to the point where it's like, this is all just messed up. And the more and more other parties get involved, the more messed up it's going to get, the more messed up it's going to be. I feel like I don't have enough content for this episode. So let me just pull up another random article here <sighs> from Apple News Spotlight. Is the Airbnb dream dead? Yes. Moving on to Halloween. Now, look, I will say this. I am historically bad at Halloween. Two things, two my two biggest flaws that I just can't shake. One, I leave cabinets open. I I have tried to mentally close them, just doesn't work. It's just not it's just not built in me. I can't train it. It's just my flaw. And then two, I am horrible at Halloween. I think the last outfit I created was a Connect 4. No, Connect 4, what's it called? Uh I made a twister set. So I carried a twister board around and I put dots on me. And I completely stole that idea. Also, the dots kept falling off. So I just looked like a dumbass with a red dot on his shirt and some basketball shorts. Now, even though I'm so bad at it, I, I enjoy it, right? It's a fun time. People are all festive. People are dressing up. People going from door to door, trick or treat, all that stuff, giving candy out. And I especially like the parties around it, right? People use dry ice to make some foggy drink. Like I said, people are all festive. People are dressed up. Back in college, you'd see a girl wearing two pieces of toilet tissue talking about she's a mummy or something. It would be 40 degrees outside. This girl would be freezing cold, but it doesn't matter because it's Halloween weekend. The clocks would go back an hour, so you're partying for an extra hour. It was the best time. But back then, I just did the typical brown boy outfits, right? I would be... Here, here's, if you know a South Asian male, go up to him and ask him if he was one of these three things. Cause I guarantee you he was, he was either one, a basketball player. That means his lazy ass didn't have an outfit and he threw a Jersey on. I've done that Two, He was Clark Kent. Every Indian boy grew up wanting to be Superman at one point. Sure. You ask them now and they're like, oh, I'm Batman. Shut up. Everyone put on that white button down shirt on top of a Superman t-shirt and wore some glasses and called themselves Clark Kent. 
skinny than a mug, no muscle on them, called themselves Clark Kent. I've done that. And then three, of course, Aladdin. I don't, I don't need to elaborate on that. It's just the easiest outfit. It's it's pretty much racial at that point, right? Like, hey, who are the South Asian people I can, or who are the brown people in pop media that I can dress up as? Aladdin. And I was thinking about who would I even be this year? And the saddest option came to my head. Who is the most popular South Asian character? I know I don't have to be someone that's brown, but it helps, right? It's the easiest thing for people to attribute. You walk in, they're like, oh, I know what you are. And that sad option was Vivek Ramaswamy. It's horrible, but I'm not doing that shit. I actually, you know what? I actually want to know what are the top Halloween outfits this year? The most popular costumes for Halloween in 2023, Barbie, Princess, Spider-Man, Witch, Fairy, Wednesday Adams, Dinosaur, Cowboy. Which of those can I dress up as? The last thing I want to talk about before I bring this to a close is in, I think, episode one, I talked about how I was an extra on my first set, and it was a student film called Dosh. That short film has been killing it. Is it because of me? Obviously not. But that short film has been killing it. And in addition to that, if you are in the LA area this Friday, October 27th at 2 p.m. in TLC Theater 4, they are actually presenting it. So you will get to see the short film. I think it's about 16 minutes in total. Uh, I don't know if anyone from that production will see this podcast, but I wanted to say congratulations. I will personally be at this thesis. If you are listening to this and you know you want the link, feel free to text me, DM me, like, comment it, and I will send it your way. The tickets are completely free. Uh, it's just something I wanted to push and see um, if there was any interest out there. With that being said, I hope everyone has a safe Halloween weekend. Go crazy, do something stupid. Go find that girl on two pieces of toilet tissue. And one last time, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It helps greatly. Uh, I hate saying that shit, but once again, I'll see you guys next week and goodbye. I'm probably going to go order a pizza now.